Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be going back into the blue teaming story. Uh, we've done the first two videos which uh, talked about Windows uh, Event Viewer, uh, we did a PCAP, so with Wireshark, and today we're going to continue uh, with the export challenge. So if you haven't already, the link to the playlist will be down below in the description. Watch these other ones. They're not required for this video. Um, so you can first watch this one then go to them. But today we're looking at export. The description for the export challenge is we spotted a suspicious connection to one of our servers and immediately took a memory dump. Can you figure out what the attackers were up to? So, okay, this person got hacked and took a memory dump. What does that mean, a memory dump? Well, memory uh, here is referred to as RAM. Um, so it's volatile memory, random access memory. What is RAM? It's volatile, which means that uh, all, it only exists or the things are only stored when the BC, when it gets power, so when it gets electricity. Um, so that's the difference between like a hard disk, which when you unplug it, it will still retain its contents, but RAM, it will lose all of its contents if you unplug it, uh, if it doesn't have power anymore. Um, so while your computer is running, you things are stored in RAM, because RAM is very fast to access, so it's, it's, it's nice and fast. Um, and when you shut your computer down, all that memory is gone. So when an attacker attacks you and hacks you, there will likely be some information left in in your um in your memory that you do you want to know to to find out what the attacker did and to reverse it or to see where your security security issue lies. So that's uh so getting a memory dump so you can analyze that memory is very important because then you can kind of put that uh, volatile memory on a hard disk or something so you can later work with it. And we have one of those memory dumps. And how are we going to work with memory dumps? Well, we can use a tool called Volatility for that. So Volatility is really, it's a whole framework um, for extracting things from memory. And it's it's a great framework. It's very it, it's very big. So you have all kinds of profiles for all different kinds of operating systems. It's um there's a lot of plugins that you can run. So for example, you have a plugin for um, clipboard, which is gonna get the contents that's on your clipboard if there were any, uh, because that's also stored in RAM. Uh, it does a DLL dump. It does so many things. Um, and really, it's a lot. So if you have to go through all of these to find something that takes a really long time and we don't really want to do that uh, manually at least so luckily uh, carlos polop really great dude he wrote uh, win piece and lint piece or and also wrote auto volatility which is basically a wrapper for volatility that is going to run all of these extraction uh, commands and all these plugins for volatility all in a row, so you can just easily access it. It takes a really long time to run. I think it took 12 minutes to run it for this binary in my PC. Um, but the command is, so we have uh, Python 2, auto volatility, we supply the file, so that's the file that we downloaded, that's the memory dump. We then say an output directory, and then we link to our local volatility, which for me is here. It's then gonna start running, so first it identifies the profile. Um, so the profile is pretty much the operating system that's running, so in this case it was Windows 7. Um, once, it's, and when it, once it has identified that, it's going to run all of these other commands that are going to extract things, and it extracts a lot of things. So if we look here, you can see all of these folders are different things that it ran. So for example, here we have the clipboard from earlier. Uh, in this case, doesn't seem like there's anything interesting in the clipboard or anything at all. Um, and there's a lot of information here, even strings. Okay, nothing in this case, but there some things will be empty because some things are there might mightn't have been, but some things there will have been. Uh, and and now our job is to find something in all of these files and all of this information that we have. So how are we going to do that? We have the attacker, and the attacker has done something to our machine. And um, how do attackers do that? Well, usually they use a command prompt. So one of the first intuitive spots to go look is have any commands been run? So if we go to volatility. Let me check out this uh, list here. Maybe we can even um, control find for um, command line and see if there's any um, plugins that display command line. So uh, the, C the command line plugin, yeah, displays process command line arguments. Okay, so let's take a look at if that found anything. So here we have the folder and we see that we have this here, okay. But quickly looking through that, there's not that 
many interesting things. We see dumpit.exe, so that's probably the application that was used to actually make this dump. Um, so that's maybe interesting, but besides that, it's also a VMware, so it's a virtual machine, which is expected. Um, going on, we see command scan is going to extract command history um, by scanning a certain location. So let's look at command scan then. Command scan here. And we see we have two, uh, or one or two, yeah, two commands that were found that we were able to extract. And the first one starts with an echo IEX, so invoke expression, and IWR, uh, invoke web request, which is very suspicious already. Um, so we are doing this command. This part seems to be URL encoded. So what I did is I copied that, put it quickly in Cyberchef so I could URL decode it. So um, I'll put this to the side because my webcam will be in front of that. Okay. So we see echo IEX. Uh, so we're going to get this URL and we're going to put that, we're going to put that in the file users, uh, app data, roaming, Microsoft, start menu, program startup. Now, what is that folder? Why is it put there? Well, this folder contains all of the applications that will be started uh, when you boot up your machine. So that's where they're all contained. And what the attacker is doing here, they're getting a PS1 and they're putting it there. So they're probably building in some persistence in the system because uh, when you shut down your PC and you turn it back on, he will gain access again or he will run his script. The attacker will run his script and do whatever he does. He can spy on you, whatever. Um, so that's a way for gaining persistence. Uh, and this is very good to know uh, when you've just been hacked because then you know, okay, I need to delete this immediately or I need to, I need to keep on researching because this is the way that they always come back. This might not be the only way, there may there may be more ways, but this is one of them, and if you can shut down one of them, you're already on your way to shutting all of them down. But uh, So this folder, let's let's go a bit deeper into this folder. We can like check this folder out on my Windows here. So Windows run, and you can actually get to that long folder by just typing shell uh, colon common startup. And when you go there, for me, this folder is empty because I don't like startup applications. But for you, there might be something in here, uh, Spotify or something like that, that you often use that's in here. Um, so yeah, that's the folder. Then let's let's try to research what this attacker actually uh, put there. And sadly, uh, this is where the challenge ends because this is not a valid URL. So we cannot go and look at the PS1 that uh, the attacker used. But this here uh, file name or this file that the attacker tried to get seems like base64 so let's see if we can decode that so if we do uh, we echo this and we do base64 we pipe that to base64 dash d we will see that we get the flag uh, windows forensics a so that was this challenge, uh, kind of an introduction to using volatility. I think this auto volatility is a very good tool to use. However, when if you're using volatility for the first time, it might be interesting to just also go through the commands. Um, the GitHub repo is a really great readme that explains a lot. So go in and read through that. Get comfortable with using volatility and with its uh, what it can do, and then you can start going for auto volatility to really get a lot. And the information, it's a lot of information, so you will have to weed through it in a in a nice way um, to find stuff. So always kind of think fr from the standpoint of the attacker, what would you have done? And obviously, would you would have probably run commands. So that's how we kind of got there this way. Um, so that was this challenge, the third video in this series. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you like this video, give the like. If you want to see more of me and more challenges and more in the series, uh, let me know and subscribe. And uh, Take care, goodbye.